peace. What's happening? It's the Scrap and Roll podcast, but it's not. We got a little twist on it. We're going to start doing Sunday hangovers. So we are back. We're going to start popping up on Sundays, just shooting the shit real quick um, and getting out of here, going over everything that happened on last week's card and anything else that we feel like talking about because, you know, it's a Sunday hangover. So I'm your host, Sky. You got your host, Jason, in the building and your host, CJ. We are live. How y'all feeling after yesterday's card? CJ spit. Oh man, it's the middest of the middest of the mid. <laughs> man, I I'm hung over from watching that car yesterday. It was just whatever. How you yeah. feeling, Jace? Yo, you know, tired, man. Trying to get this coffee up in me. Minus the coffee. Shout out to those Thai drinkers. You know, the yes, Thai tea is where it's at. Um, <clears throat> I feel good. I'm ready to chat it up, chop it up about it. Let's go. Let's get into it. Um, going into it, like we talked about last weekend, I mean, last week we knew that like the car wasn't stacked, but we had no idea that like it was going to be this underwhelming. Like I, I, as it continued to go on, like Jace kept texting me and was like, "Mm, I'm not liking none of the fights. And I mean, they were (laughs) cool fights. Like, it's not like they were super bad, but in general, first of all, let's talk about y'all know we, well, we, as in me and CJ was going for Juju from for the 619. And Juju got pieced the fuck up. Oh, yeah. Why? I didn't. I didn't know who Veronica Hardy is, but I got my eye on her now. <laughs> yeah, man. You know how it is. You know I love San Diego. Shout out to Juju. She's just still young, and you know she needs some more time in there. Yeah. And that's how. And some. I was talking to somebody on TikTok, and they were talking about, man, she looks like different when she gets hit. I'm like, go watch some of her fights in Invictus. She looks. She's just, you know, a little bit awkward in there, but she'll be all right. She got that ten planet jujitsu. Yeah. You know, shout out to San Diego. Yeah. <laughs> um. You know, then you had Jai Herbert in them. I mean, oh, let's talk about your boy with the low key Connor Rock, Jake Hadley. <laughs> I like his little fur. <laughs> I thought it was cool. I thought it was cool. Um, but the car just really wasn't, it, it, it never really took off. I thought the Le- uh, Lerone Murphy versus Gabrielle Santos, that was one of the best fights on the card, especially like on the prelims. Like them boys mm-hmm. was going after, if they were 11. Uh, I think Gabriel Santos coming into it was 10 and 0. This was his debut. And then uh, Lerone, uh, he was 11 and 0. Well, now he's 12 and 0. But um, that was a good fight. But we got. Like, regardless, we got to talk about Muhammad Makayev. Hold on. Before, wait, 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 wait. Before we even go there, can we talk about the name Lerone? Get the fuck out of here. Can we? <laughs> Black people, can we stop giving people these names? What the fuck is a Lerone? Can it be Leroy? Why would it be Lerone? Well, why do you got to make a... me think to say your motherfucking name? Oh my. I thought his name was Leron, like Leron from down the street, Leron. <laughs> <laughs> Leron always got a fucking cheeseburger on his hands. Yeah, man. What the fuck? Oh, man. That oh, shit is man. wild to me. Listen, your boy did not fucking tap. Hashtag Tony the God Ferguson, right? His shit was. Bah, 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 bah. I'm loving it. I was weak. <laughs> hey, bro, I- had rubber knees. Yeah, How rubber long- knees. Were y'all actively watching that or were y'all like squinting and looking away, kind of like, uh, uh? I got closer to my TV. <laughs> I was looking at it. I was like, shout out to bro. Because I'm like, that. I was like, oh, my knee is hurting. That looks so bad. It was going the yeah. opposite way. 90 degrees. And then I was just so fucking disappointed that your boy fucking tapped from a neck crank after that. How are you going to tap oh. from a neck crank after that? After your boy literally let you pop four of his tendons in his fucking knee and leg. Come on now, dog. Come on, man. Yeah, yeah. Muhammad, so for those who may not know, you know, since he's been in the UFC, he's been uh, stating that he wants to take on John Jones' record as the youngest uh, UFC champion. His birthday is next year. He turns 23 next year. But after that, yeah, your boy's going to be out for a year. He's definitely not going to be able to get that. But when he didn't tap, I literally screamed at the top of my lung, he's a fucking winner. He's a fucking winner. I don't, like, like he is the definition of a winner. Like, he refused. He refused. He was like, if you're going to have to walk off with the leg, just like Tony, you're going to have to take my arm because I'm not about to give up. That was insane because I'm tapping immediately. <laughs> or yeah. uh, uh, or for, you know, you old school head that's out there, shot out there, you know, I, I did this past guy with these young cats, but your boy... Antonio Minataro Nagara, who let Frank Mayer break his shit. Uh, oh, Knew it was going to happen. Saw it. Watched it. Kaka. Kaka. 
facial hey, expression to, didn't even change when it broke. That no. was shout scary. out to Frank Mir because he be taking arms and legs out of there. Shout out to Frank Mir, bro. I fuck with Frank Mir. Yo. Oh, really? Oh, I can't fuck with that nigga at all, man. Why? Guy, one, he just like the definition of a douche afterwards, actually. The remaining parts, you know, the sludge. <gasps> Whoa. Yep. Pause. How many douches have you been a part of? But uh, anyway. <laughs> uh, Sam Patterson, I wonder if he knows where he's at. Uh, that was brutal. That was Listen, sad. I didn't even see that coming because it looked like Big Brother fighting the little brother. Like your boy had a full foot on him. I'm like, oh, he about to get him out of there. He came out, your boy looked confident. My man turned into a fucking zombie, just arms, just reaching out for anything that was possible. I was fucking dead. Yo, but when he stood up and he was over there trying to give the business to uh, Mark mm -hmm. Goddard. Listen, mm -hmm. he didn't stop until his coach came in. And when his coach came in, Mark Goddard got the fuck up out of there. Mark Goddard was gone. <laughs> Mark Goddard was like, I don't know. I don't know what's going on over there. Facts. Yeah. Yeah, also, yeah. I, I was talking to Sky yesterday. We're talking about how, like, that's just the craziest thing about your body and, like, um, the sport, you know, he was so far out of it, but his body was still reacting. You know what I mean? Like it's supposed to on, you know, quintessentially autopilot. That was wild. And I think another thing to know is like, that's a good testament to like when people say, oh, he was still, he was still in it. Boom. He was still in it. Physically, he's still moving, but that man was not there. It's like, mm -hmm. so a lot of times you see these guys and you're like, yeah, but he was still this. Listen, the ref is the closest. They know what's going on. Now, what I will say is that that fight could have been stopped at least four punches before then. When he first got knocked down and his head hit the back of the canvas, he was out. He only woke, he kept waking up every time he was getting punched. Aside from that, like, yeah, you know. Yeah, that was sad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, like, your boy came inside there and got it done. Wasn't this his UFC debut? Yes. He oh. was 8 no, I think, going into the fight. Hey, someone's old got 8. And that was his. Uh, Chris Duncan versus Omar uh, Morales, which this was a cool fight, but this is where I started keeping my eyes open for for the judge. Uh, what I say his name was? Paul Sutherland? <laughs> that man's trash. He gave Omar Morales a 30-27 in this fight. And I was like, wait, what? Where? Like, where is that coming from? Where? where did, and Omar lost the fight. Like, even Omar was like, what the fuck? You mean? <laughs> Y'all gave me 30-27? Um... Yeah, I thought that was ridiculous. And then moving on to the Marvin Vittori versus Roman Delize, the same judge, Paul Sutherland, gave him a 30-27. Yeah, so I don't want to say it was robbery, you know what I mean? But I thought it was pretty clear and concise that Roman got the job done. And, like, who the fuck wants to see Vittori win? He's just, I mean, he is almost as bad as, shout out to Bilal Muhammad. He's just, oh just terrible personality, terrible fighting style. I don't care about him in any capacity. I just want him to go away. Y'all about to make me yes. become a Bilal fan. So we were talking about Mar Marvin Vittori last night on my live. And shout out to T-Ball Paul. He came up with something. He was like, T or Marvin Vittori has no attributes that you would want as a fighter. He doesn't have great striking. He doesn't have great wrestling. He doesn't have great jujitsu. He doesn't have great grappling. He he this is there. And it was like when you create your character on like UFC four or whatever, he's the generic version when you start. Is that's you and Marvin Vittori when you start fighting, you know? And then you gotta build your attributes up. <laughs> yeah. <I'm dead. laughs> it's like you don't want to be that guy. He's just like the plain, he's just white bread, just yeah, I don't know, man. Dude, it, it, did yeah. y'all think that the decision was just? No. 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 Uh, I felt like Roman got it done clearly. I thought Roman clearly won round one. I thought Marvin won round two. And I thought that Roman clearly won round three. I mean, he stunned him. He he almost got him out in the first and the third round. So how did that even go to Marvin? And I can't stand you fucking cucks who keep writing, talking about, oh, about somebody being outstruck. Like, this is not, you can't look at numbers in a fight and say, oh, well, he outstruck him, so that automatically meant he won. Like, there's numerous fights that I could bring up, but I'm, all, I'm always work Max inside of the, here somehow. Him versus Poirier. He outstruck Poirier. He still lost the fight. 
every strike is, is not weighed the same, right? So if I just jab you, it does nothing. You just run into it. It's completely different if, if I jab you and it makes your head pop back. That's a that's damage. There's a complete difference. Even with the, as we'll get to the main car, like even with Kamaru and them, like a little side, little pop, pop, that's not doing any damage. But if I kick you and you stumble and you fall or you slip, that is a damaging leg kick. But having 17 fucking leg kicks but they're not anything. They're just like a little boop, a little filler. You're just using it as a range. That's not the same. So don't miss me with the whole outstruck bullshit. Like you're just talking. You're just talking. 100%. Every orgasm does not deserve a name. <laughs> LaShawn. LaShawn is here. LaShawn Strickland is in the building, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Casey O'Neill got beat the fuck up. And this is when... The, and this is when uh, Michael Bisping really started showing his fucking balls. I was sick of Michael Bisping. Like, right after this fight, uh, CJ texted me and was like, I'm so sick of hearing Bisping. Like, I'm ready to turn the commentators off. He was just so biased, he couldn't help himself. Like, he couldn't help himself. Home cooking. He was, he was tripping. Maya was styling on, on uh, O'Neal. Styling on him. She looked amazing. The combos was looking great. And I was hearing what Bisming and they were saying. I was like, what What are you even talking about right here? Maya would hit her with a three-shot combo, boom, boom, boom. Casey would throw, like, one and hit her. And they're like, oh, Neil's doing this. I'm like, what the fuck are you even talking about right now? It sounded crazy. It, it really did. And when DC, when DC was, like, first in the first round, DC was praising Maya. And then out of nowhere, I'm about to find this clip. Uh, Bisping's just like, yeah, well, it's competitive. Casey is still landing too. No, what are you talking about? It's not competitive. She getting hit with the same combo. The same combo. Like, like she's a regular here. Just as soon as you walk in, hey, you know, you want that one-two uppercut? Like, mm -hmm. Facts. Facts. Yeah. I thought that was, I thought that was wild. That's when Bisping really started acting up. Shout out to Gunnar Nelson um, and Barb uh, Barbarina. Uh, Gunner got it done. Good for him. But let's get into like the the reason why we really here. You know, Justin the highlight Gaethje versus Raphael Faziz. Well, I'll start off by saying this, um, oh, man. We as fans, like we were the big winners of that fight. You know, um, oh, man, it was such a close fight. I could definitely see how people would even give in that fight to Faziz. I think he clearly won round one. I think round two was a coin flip. You kind of could go either way. And then, yeah, uh, Justin took round three, even though Faziz fucking stunt that nigga in the first 30 seconds. I thought he was going to get him out of there. I just mm -hmm. think he couldn't see because his fucking eye was just looking like mama's meatloaf. Donald Cerrone? <laughs> Has entered the chat. Um, do you have this as your fight of the year thus far? Yes. 100% fight of the year so far. Uh, I still have Shavkat Rachmanov versus Geoff Neal. Yes, I'm still calling him Geoff uh, as, as my fight of the year uh, because it was just, it was everything. But what about you, CJ? For fight of the year? Yeah, like, is it a part of, like, your contenders, like, thus far? Yeah, it, 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 it could be in there. It could be in there. Like, it's up there. And probably Volk in them is on there as well. Yep, yep. Uh, Volk, uh, Jeff Neal's fight was good. Yeah, and this one was up there, too. I just wish if Gaethje, if this, this motherfucker refused to grapple at all, which is cool. <laughs> which is cool. But I was like, bro, if he would have just grappled a little bit in the first round, you see how... Aziv hits a wall at the third in the third round. It's something about him that his he, he like third round. I'm gonna start slowing all the way down. So if he would have grappled just a little bit in the first round, I think he would probably would have got his ass way the hell up out of there in the third round. And I just finished watching that fight again, and they was throwing haymakers and bombs. They, you heard everything in the, in in that fight. That was the, the, there was going straight street fight status, just throwing yeah. eighteen thousand percent on every fucking punch. But yeah. I don't think he could grapple him because he couldn't catch him. Faziz was just way too fucking quick for him. And one thing that me and Sky sent a text about, you know, because we've debated how would Volkanowski do at one fifty five against big hitters like a, a Gaethje and stuff like that. And it's just like, oh, he'd do fine because like Justin wouldn't be able to hit him. Yeah, that mm -hmm. was. That was exactly what I was about to say. Like, after I talked to Jace after this, I said, and this is for all you people. Y'all know that I hate Volkanovski. I'm a proud Volkanovski hater. Uh, but I don't disrespect his skills. But 
y'all know it's up. It's always gonna be up for me. But <laughs> when I watched that fight, I looked at, I talked to Jason. I said, "Oh, oh, I was wrong. I can't. I was the main person who was like, I don't know. How's he gonna do if he gets hit by Justin or Dustin? Blah blah blah. It ain't gonna be able to catch that man. He gonna be in and out, point dancing on them. He gonna be in there in styling out. on them. Like, sure, everybody's got a puncher's chance, but like." His game plan is he's so fast, he's so quick, darting in and out, point fighting, bop, bop, move, bop, bop, move. Oh, he, oh, he going to clean up. If he goes 155 for real, he going to clean up. And y'all know I don't try to give him any kind of props about anything. Is but. that because he destroyed Max? Yeah. Okay. Sorry, just wanted to clarify. Yeah. In the third fight, I mean, I'm okay. I can admit it. Like, you know, that was a year ago. I'm good. So what do you think's next for uh, Dustin? Is it Dustin? I always get Dustin and Justin all that. Justin, what's <laughs> next for Justin? Um, Justin versus Dustin again, part two. That was a bang. Another one? Yeah, I just watched yeah. that fight, yes, two days ago. Yeah. The battle I'm tired of seeing these guys, though. Facts. But let me tell you. But, wait, wait, but let me tell you, though. But they stay at the top, right? So at <laughs> yeah. least now we're going to get the battle of the Dana White privilege. This is going to, Dustin versus Justin is going to be the battle of the Dana White privilege because they just keep recycling and getting title shots, yeah. right? At least now, if they fight each other, that will give, well, I mean, Benil effed himself by going and deciding to fight. Uh, Charles, Charles. But if he does make it by Charles, then they, then that'll give Benil the opportunity to fight. Because if Justin mm -hmm. and Dustin have to fight each other, then that will stop them from like recycling in. Like it's the Dana White privilege. It's showing. Shout out to Tony Ferg. Shout out to Tony. Yeah, uh, I thought it was a, yeah, it was a haymaker. They was going at it. Um, speaking of Dana, no, nah, we won't even get to that yet. Uh, let's talk about the main. Let's talk about the main fight. How'd you guys feel about it? How'd you guys think it was scored? Um, yeah, just your feelings overall. What do you think, what CJ? You think? Set it uh, first. I was just, <laughs> it was this. I watched the fight and I had no feelings about it. It was just like, <laughs> damn, bro. Okay, I was super excited. Um, I rewatched it again this morning, and I thought, you know, I thought Leon pulled it off again. It was just fucking. I, it was one of those fights that I literally just. I, I watched it. And I, I didn't even want to come back and watch it, but I knew we were going to come and talk. So I was like, let me watch it again. And like I got on TikTok again. I was like, I really I I just felt nothing for it. You know, I, was, yeah. I didn't give a fuck about it. And I hate feeling that way about, you know, and I text Kyle. I was like, it, it felt like a glorified high level sparring match to me. You know, it was just Kamaro looked slow. Leon wasn't throwing like hard, but Leon, he did decent enough to win to me. But I, I just don't give a fuck, really. Hey, tell us how you really feel. Don't hold back. <laughs> <laughs> it was just mid because I wanted a little bit more, and I just felt it was kind of lackluster, if you get what I'm saying. Yeah. Just like your stroke game. Got it. No. Hey, I shoot the club up, man. I've been <laughs> with mine for I've been with mine for 20 years, baby. Uh, yo, I uh, saw your Yelp review. There's a lot of two stars. Five stars. Five stars, baby. <laughs> Five star general. Hey, you keep telling yourself that. Five star general. Yeah, sure. <laughs> womp womp. A little half. A real MMA guru on us. <laughs> anyway, what do you think, uh, Jace? Um, so I guess for me personally, I actually really enjoyed the fight. Um, I think the biggest thing I I came out of there was what? that. I'm sorry. Did I stutter? You yeah, actually you did. Remember? A little bit. <laughs> you enjoyed the fight. Yeah, I enjoyed the fight. I mean, okay. I understand that some MMA fans, you know, can't tell about high level striking, okay. so yet they'll see it boring. But for me, being the guru that I am, you oh. know, I saw this strategic match. Um, all bullshit aside, though, um, I think the two things I got out of this fight was one, Leon Edwards won the fight. You know, and with him winning the fight, because we all kind of agreed that uh, Uzman was going to go out there and smash the fuck out of him. Yeah, uh, we, thought, we thought that. Yeah. And regardless of who you think won the fight, it was way closer than what any of us expected going into it. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to give props to Leon for that. Uh, secondly, this motherfucking Uzman, what happened? Because he definitely went from fifth to fourth. Like, he looked slow. He looked tired. Mm -hmm. I don't really understand, like, what his game plan was, you know, or 
what was option B? Yes, I heard the corner saying, like, keep pressure and keep pressure them. You know what I mean? But that really wasn't getting it done. So, like, what was the next option? You know what I'm saying? I feel like my man Uzman was ill prepared. You know, I think even a bigger question is what's next for Uzman? Yeah, you're right. Like you were saying, he, he everybody's been saying he's been having problems with his knees. And like I said, I just rewatched the fight. And I would, like I said, I was pulling for Usman just slightly a little bit more. And I was like, I wish he would have been able to control the takedowns a lot more. You know, Leon, Leon's defense was amazing. He got back up in a lot of those situations. They separated in a lot of those situations. Shout out to that fence grab <laughs> holding on for dear life. <laughs> Listen, okay, so before we get into Leon the cheater, uh, oh, um, man. I had it as a draw. Um, and even if I give so initially upon watching it, I gave uh, Kamaru two, three, and four. Uh, even four being the swing round for me. Um, even if you give Leon the fourth round, it's still a draw in my book because Kamaru gets round two and Kamaru gets a 10 8 in round three, where your boy Leon decides to just continue to be the fucking cheater that he is. I am happy that these fence grabs these gloves because he was doing it in the first he was doing it in the second fight sticking his hands inside of the gloves um the nut shots i'm surprised there wasn't an eye well there was an eye poke but kamara was just like fuck it let's keep going like there was two yeah like i'm happy he got at least one point taken but like even at that and then your boy the cuck bisbing is over here just oh yes, why is I, why, I hated is, that. Kamar, I hated why that. is kamara worried about all of this because it's a fucking sanctioned fight. This isn't a backyard brawl. There's certain things you can do and there's certain things you can't do. And here you go, Michael Bisping, like just guzzing, just guzzing over uh, Leon. It, it was disgusting. But but either way I look at it, um, I've seen it as a draw and I lean towards Kamaro. I'm not upset at Leon winning. Like I could see a path to victory for Leon. But for me, neither fighters did anything anything like neither father did anything i think it's interesting like when people like did kamaro look different yes kamaro looked different i think a lot of that had to do with the leg tick leg kick um attacks that uh leon went with which was smart but i'm looking at the stats because everybody wants to bring up the stats i'm looking at the stats kamaro threw in total 232 strikes leon threw actually let me show this on the screen uh, Leon threw 164 total strikes. So while we're saying that Kamaru was doing less, quote unquote, he was actually throwing more, but he was missing, right? Um, so his accuracy was significantly lower than Leon. So he was at 42% and Leon was at uh, 74%, right? So Stop, pause for a second. That's fucking wild in a five round fight. Well, five that's for, for significant your... strikes. Yeah, 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 I'm just saying like, that's still wild for your significant strike. Be seven. Like, I've never heard of someone... Especially if I going the uh, distance, going uh, the distance. Sean, uh, Sean, Sugar Sean just entered the chat. He's highly accurate, extremely accurate. Uh, Max Holloway just entered the chat. Uh, what I was going to say about what you're saying about Kamaro, a lot of his stuff was glancing off elbows and stuff mm -hmm. like that. You know what I mean? So a lot of the strikes were getting, even in the second round, I rewatched again and I when I first watched, I I gave the round to Kamaru. Then rewatching it again today, he got that little takedown, but Leon was back up. He had him on the cage. He got the little strikes in off his on, on when they were grappled up on the cage, and then they split. And then as soon as they split, Leon was getting nasty body kicks. He was getting la nasty leg kicks. He even hit him with a nasty uh head kick too. But it was like I said, it was this like kind of a, like a. It felt like they weren't really trying to go at it with each other as hard as possible. And that's why when I was watching the fight, I was like, I think re-watching it again, I think Leon did this slightly above, a little bit more to pull out the fight. Just slightly more. And that's about it. Here's what I think. I think what's happening is, is that as fans, even going back to the Islam versus Mahashev fight, we're doing pride fight we're doing pride uh judging we're looking at a fight in total and saying i think this fighter won but we're but in order to become a champion which i wish damien was on here today but like him and i were going back and forth in the dms about this like wait 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 has damien ever been a champion <laughs> shut up Damn, shots fired oh listen, that's a no okay got it Just wanted listen, to... like in order like i hate when people say i've always hated when people say to be to be the champ you have to beat the champ no you don't to be the champ 
you have to win three out of five rounds, period, right? And when you start actually looking at three out of the five rounds that that, that a person needs to win, um, that's the way that things are, are, you know, are judged. So when you see Volkanovski at the end of the fifth round in their fight, on top of him laying it down, it leaves that impression of your mind like, oh my God, Volkanovski won this fight. But when you go back and you watch each round, you start to see... That no, that's not why. And so that's how I feel about this Leon Edwards fight, right? So we can look at the stats and say, oh, well, he outstruck him. Or he did this, he did that. But when you go round by round and you judge a fight just based off the round, because I always send Jace uh, how I think the rounds are going, whether it's 2-1, whatever the thing may do. You know what I mean? Um, and I feel like a lot of um, MMA fans have started to just like see a fight in full, see somebody have a good performance, and just start to be like, yeah, yeah, I felt like he won overall. But like when you look at the rounds and break them down, like it that's not necessarily what ends up happening. Couldn't disagree more. I'm a big bleeder. I'm a big believer, not bleeder. It's not that time of the month. Um, of to be the man, you gotta beat the man. Shout out to Ric Flair. You got you gotta beat the man. You gotta beat the man. This is not WWE. Sure. UFC, still the same thing. You got to beat yeah, it. And in order to beat the man, all you got to do is win three out of the five rounds. This is not pride judging. That's not true. We're not true. looking at the whole fight and saying, all right, if we look at the whole fight, this person won. Did they give the third round a 10-8 round? Some judges did. Uh, I'll pull up the judge card. Like For me, David Lethaby had 47-47. <laughs> that would have been exactly how I would have judged it. Uh, let me pull up the... But while you're talking, see, it's like yeah. you're saying the fight should have been a, a draw, right? But it was right. a majority decision, which is right next to a draw. One person actually saw it as a draw. So then, like, why the commotion if it's, like, that close to it? Uh, because for me, when I look at the judges' scorecards, like I said, I said it was a draw or I give Usman two, three, and four. That's just how I feel. Go back and watch round number four. I watched it. Leon and, and Edwards you won. That what did Leon do in that round that won the round? Leon was just tagging him up. You and know, for me, what it's did easy. Leon do? For me, it's easy, right? Because I didn't give him necessarily a 10-8 round. I can see it as a 9-9 round for round three. I I, I did that too. Y'all think I he did that won too. the round? Oh, that's crazy. I did that too. That's crazy. Now he's in the minority. Going back and re-watching it in my first seeing it yesterday, I was like, oh, 10-8. Boom. Right off the rip to him. Rewatching it today, Kamaru was not on the gas. He didn't have nothing on the gas. And now we, uh, the leg kicks was nasty. The body kicks was. What round is this right now? We're talking about round three. Yeah. Um, he didn't do enough to me in that third round. So I had it. I just put it on my paper because I rewatched and put on the score. I was like, yeah, probably like a nine nine to me. That's why I asked you, uh, what did they have it on their card? Yeah, so that's. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. Jesus. I'm sorry. <laughs> you, um, good, you good, nigga? <laughs> so, so round three, uh, the only judge that gave him a nine nine was Ben Cartledge. Everybody else gave him a ten eight. Everybody else gave uh, Kamaro thought felt like uh, Kamaro won round three. Um, yeah. Well, either way, so I have it scored exactly as Dan Lethaby has it. Um. With Kamaru um, winning. But at the end of the day, if it, it doesn't matter, you know, who wins. Because at the end of the day, the record books give it to Leon Edwards. Leon Edwards is the welterweight champion. Uh, apparently, he's going to have to fight Dana White privileged, Kobe Covington next, uh, who does not deserve it at all. I think it's absolutely just disgusting and ridiculous. It's absolutely disrespectful to come. Um, to Bilal Muhammad, who's on an eight-fight winning streak, the biggest winning streak behind Leon Edwards, and y'all keep playing in that man's face. Once again, I'm not a Bilal Muhammad fan, but y'all are pushing me to become one just because y'all being so disrespectful. Like, y'all really acting like that man. And then I see somebody, like, in the, on Instagram in the comments talking about, um, oh, he he fought Wonderboy Luke and Sean Brady. W when's the last time Wonderboy won? When's the last time Luke f won? When's the last time that, sh and who the hell is Sean Brady? I'm like, really? Because when he went into all those fights with all those strikers, y'all was, was talking lose. about, he was supposed to lose. Y'all talking about he was going to kill him, all kind of stuff. He was supposed to get slaughtered by Sean Brady, who was running mm -hmm. through everybody. Like, so y'all keep going back doing this whole revisionist history thing. And it's like, the reality is, is that like, 
every now y'all want to feed him to Shavkat? Now y'all want to yeah. feed him to Shavkat. And I guarantee you, what if he gets past Shavkat? Y'all gonna be like, well, who the hell is Shavkat? Who is Shavkat? <laughs> it's gonna be something. Like, stop it. I don't even I don't like his style. Like, I'm I'm not like a Bilal Muhammad. Hell yeah. I I'm not entertained by his style. But the man is a winner. And you gotta respect winners. You so it's kind of like you kind of don't get rewarded for sitting there with an eight fight win streak. You do all the things that you're supposed to do. Bro doesn't fight for what a year and a few months, mm -hmm. and it, what he's lost his he lost his last what was it Kamaru Masvidal and then Kamaru again. Yeah. Right. No. So no. He lost Ty Woodley. No, his last fight was against Masvidal. Yeah, right. I'm okay. Beat the brakes off that nigga. <clears throat> So you have Bilal on an eight-fight win streak. He just fought not too long ago. He won, got a good decisive TKO on uh, Sean Brady. Unbeaten Sean Brady. Yeah. Bro doesn't fight for so long. People have been calling him out. Yeah. People have been calling him out. Gilbert's been calling him out for three years. Bilal was like, hey, we, he was supposed to fight yesterday. They were supposed to make that happen. Bro didn't want it, but bro pops up for the uh for the weigh-ins out of nowhere. I don't I thought he had brain damage. Shout out I to he had court. I thought he had court. <laughs> Wasn't he in court? Ah well, 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 kids. King Kobe has entered the chat. Chaos Kobe Covington and New Covington, is that what she said? Huntington, Huntington, uh -huh. and Cunnilings, what? And new champion. He gets Leon out of there. Yeah. Oh, man. I cannot wait to hear the noise. I cannot wait to hear the haters talk about how this is bullshit as your man is strapped up. It's great. Yeah, he's going to be gifted a fucking fighter that he can actually beat. Because if he fights anybody else in the top 10... No, he's not making it. He's going to be gifted a, a shot against Leon. And if I'm Leon, right, you the champion, you need to learn how to pull fucking ranks. The problem is, and I mean no disrespect when I say this, I really think that Leon Edwards uh, has is on the spectrum. I really do. He has a very childlike, um, that's a whole different thing, but but I really do. And like I said, that's no disrespect. Um, but like, He's got to really step into it. Like, all right, you didn't defend your title. Step into your shit and say, listen, he's not getting the title shot. Fuck what Dana is saying, right? Because they always say that, that the champ gets to choose who they're going to fight. Choose who you're going to fight. Unfortunately, he wants to fight Jorge Masvidal, which is even worse, even more stupid. Why are we recycling these guys that ain't doing nothing? Meanwhile, you got Gilbert. You got Bilal. You got, like, people who actually deserve to fight for a title. Uh, who else is up there? Did, 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 wait, wait, wait. Why are you saying Gilbert? Why, why, why is he being said? You know, did he not just beat uh, Jeff Neal or who? Uh, Neil, 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 Neil Magny. Neil Magny. Is that is that like something to to, to be the boisterous about? How did he do in his fight before that? Like he, went to, he, he, he went, went to war. He went to war. Oh, he lost. Yeah. Got it. Blah blah blah. He lost. Oh, just yeah. like Kobe, right? Just like Kobe. Hey. He lost to Kamaru. Like, like we always say, Sky. Like we always say, Your this, boy is a, this is a business. Hey, this is a business. This is a business. Stop this is a madness. business. And you Kobe really beats think. people with asses and seats. And on top of that, that boy can fucking fight. Yes, he can. Oh, he sounds like Hendo right now. Don't he sound like Hendo, CJ? I sound like Dan Henderson. That's awesome. No, no, you sound like uh, the the uh, guy Courtney from, Hendo. Yeah, Courtney <laughs> from uh, Boisterous Boys. Shout out to them. Shout out to them. Yes, sir. Uh, <laughs> you know, at the end of the day, we we can get into the semantics and everything on uh, Wednesday show, but this was just the hangover, just to be able to come here, shoot the shit, talk a little bit. Um, about what happened yesterday. So we'll start popping up here on Sundays. Y'all can come check us out. We'll be back even more outlandish. You know, shout out to all the people that uh, was going crazy on TikTok. Like as soon as Leon won, they was going crazy in my comments. Yeah. And guess what? 4747, I'm standing on it. It is what it is. And at the end of the day, like I told that one dude, that's not my guy. Usman's not my boy. Like, yeah. you, know, you know, that's not my guy. Now my guy is my guy. When my guy fights, no slander will be allowed. So we'll see. And new. 
and new. Shout out to Kobe. Oh my gosh. All right, y'all. We are out of here. I hope that y'all enjoy the rest of y'all week. Um, and we will be back. Peace. <sighs>